the failure of many historians to really address, as I coined some years ago, the Moorish legacy, to bring out the truth about the Moorish legacy, is what has led to the, the level of ignorance that still exists today. Folks didn't know that they were, you know, were Moors, or the, who were the Moors? They just knew they were Negroes or, or black, right, or colored folks. So from 7-Eleven begins this increased connection to other parts of the Islamic world. The largest empire, larger than the Roman Empire, larger than the Greek Empire, and it results in bringing knowledge in different areas of metallurgy. You have people having access to ancient knowledge. And one of the most dominant and noteworthy aspects of this, of course, is then the advances in the sciences. That's what's so disturbing, is that the, the hiding of that great legacy that had tremendous impact Seven ten or seven eleven of the Common Era, or A.D. Anno Domini, basically is when the Moors, or when the African Islamic armies and Asiatic Islamic armies, invade the Iberian Peninsula. Most of them are coming from North and Northwest Africa, and most of them, the, in terms of the troops, are Amazi, or so-called Berber. But the leadership is coming from Damascus. They're Syrian and part of what's known as the Umayyad dynasty. So they invade the, the land. But what's interesting about what's going on is, well, there are two things. One, there had always been Africans and people from the Near East, Asian peoples, going into the Iberian Peninsula, what we know today is Spain and, and Portugal. So that was not unusual. There was always exchange back and forth across the Straits of Gibraltar, which used to be called the uh, Pillars of Hercules, in reference to the, when the Greeks had influence. But with this invasion, which is largely the result, I would say, of two or three things that are going on. One is that the religion of Islam is indeed spreading. So you have larger numbers of people in Africa and other parts of, of um, uh, Asia. And in some parts of Southern Europe, but primarily not so much because it starts, of course, in um, the Arabian Peninsula, who are either converting to Islam on their own or being encouraged to convert, usually for purposes of trade, for example, and fitting in. But the other thing that's happening is that the Christian population in the Iberian Peninsula, led by people like uh, Roderick, King Roderick, are not really treating their own population very well. So you have Christians who are poor in these regions that are dominated by Christian monarchs like Roderick, who also is ruling over a Jewish population, um, the Sephardic or Sephardim community. And as a result, the disgruntled populations in the Iberian Peninsula, made up of Christians and poor, so I should say poor Christians and Jews, knows about this new religion that is spreading in Africa, in the Maghreb, in Northwest Africa, and in other parts of the East. And some historians recognize, and I say some because now I'm talking about a topic that's very broad, but some historians recognize that clearly 
the disgruntled Christian population didn't have any great allegiance to maintaining the elites, the Latifundia, that were in charge of the Iberian Peninsula, part of the, especially with King Roderick. One of the most common accounts of what occurs that essentially results in this great change with this invasion of the Moors or the Islamic uh, African and Asiatic or African and Asian armies is that Roderick, who was in alliance with someone named Count Julian, had had Count Julian send his daughter, Florinda, to his court. So Florinda goes to the court of King Roderick as part of um, allegedly improving relations between monarchs or rulers. And she was to be instructed essentially in the ways of the court and under the tutelage and protection of Roderick. Well, as the accounts go from these primary sources that exist both in um, Latin and in references even in, in Arabic, people hear or people recount that Count Julian's daughter Florinda was basically taken advantage of by King Roderick. As a result, Julian then begins to encourage, basically, and assist this invasion that's coming in from North Africa. So that's kind of like a way of encapsulating different aspects of what will um, result in this invasion. Clearly, there's an aspect of um, the interests of uh, acquisition of, if you will, resources on the part of Muslim armies. Clearly there's an aspect of the disgruntled population in the Iberian Peninsula that says we can't do any worse, presumably under these people, these foreigners, who are not really all that foreign because there had been interaction. And then there's the aspect of, you know, the problem that Julian has with Roderick because of what happened to his daughter. As a result, the invasion ensues over the course of about a century and a half. You have increasing numbers of people converting to Islam, although the Christian population along with the Jewish population are not required to convert because of the particular theology of Islam, which says Christians and Jews are still the people of the book. And so as a Muslim, you still respect Jesus or Isa or Yeshua, and you still respect Moses or Musa, as it were. So there isn't a problem, and of course, Ibrahim or Abraham, who was the, the foundation for that entire um, monotheistic this series and many others can only be found exclusively on Amexa. Quickly sign up with our three-step process to get started. The link to access your trial is in the description below. We'll see you in the next chapter. Peace and love.